Hey guys, what is up? This is a weird video because I kind of actually wrote a script for this, but at the same time, I don't really have any video for you guys to watch. This is just kind of like a disclaimer video or me just talking about my thoughts when it comes to this new thing that has released for the Nintendo Switch. This is called the MIG Switch Dumper. Basically, you use it to dump your Switch cartridges into a ROM format that then you can play without the cartridge on your Switch. Now, this is a blessing and a curse for Nintendo Switch gaming. It's a blessing due to archiving games to play after the console is no longer supported or updated and becomes vintage, which I know is going to be kind of a long ways off. But with the talk of the Nintendo Switch 2 potentially being a thing this year, or maybe next year, that's going to be the start of the downfall of the OG Switch and even the OLED Switch. But there's also some curse to this type of item being in existence. So let me explain the blessing with a little bit of a story. We'll take an example out of Nintendo's own playbook here. When the uh, emulating of consoles came to the Nintendo Switch, I forget what that was called, um, not homebrew, anyway, it doesn't matter. When you were able to officially buy licensed Nintendo or Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo games from Nintendo on the Nintendo Switch through the eShop, Nintendo was caught using a pirated ROM of Super Mario Brothers. Now, at first you would think, oh, it's just a .NES file. Of course, it's an NES game. Why would they use another file extension? Well, people with homebrewed Nintendo Wiis ripped the game off of the Nintendo Wii after it was purchased officially from Nintendo and analyzed the file. And right down to a byte, they were able to trace it back to multiple ROM sites that were sharing the same ROM and prove that Nintendo pirated their own game to sell back to people. Really strange that they didn't have <laughs> their own archive or ability to compile the game and just put it on the Nintendo Switch. I guarantee you somebody at Nintendo got fired, or maybe a whole team of somebody's knowing how Nintendo works. But that's kind of the blessing here, is there's this archiving of games that is a wonderful thing there is so much stuff that has disappeared over the years i remember not game copy world oh my god it was another website that i used to use all the time um not emu paradise either i can't remember but it was this huge conglomerate website where users could sign up and upload their rare games it was where i found some of my favorite old school games to play on pc which were the taco bell X Games games, which I've always wanted to speed run the BMX game, so maybe that'll come in a future video or a live stream, because I think it would just be fun, because nobody sees that game. Nobody's really ever seen it before, except for like people like me that originally got it from Taco Bell in the early 2000s. Um, <laughs> it was a fun game, I'll tell you that. But anyway, back to the topic. When that website went down, there was a lot of stuff that disappeared from the internet for a long time, and you couldn't download them anymore. If you used archive.org, you could get to some of the download links, but slowly over time, even as the file hosts went down that were hosting the files that users were using to upload their stuff to, it just ended up basically all that stuff was gone. One of my favorite PC games from my childhood that I really want to try to get one of my kids into once they're old enough to understand it was Lionel Train Town. Lionel is a very famous uh, model train maker toy maker basically they're not toys and you, depending on who you ask it's like asking if an action figure is a toy some people will get real mad but because of that website i was able to find that game when i couldn't find it anywhere else and it was really expensive to even get on like ebay at the time or something like that but because of the efforts of people on the internet archiving the stuff, I was able to find it with ease, especially because it was b abandoned where at that point. It didn't even work unless you ran it in like a Windows XP emulator on your computer until somebody made a better CD crack for it. Um, even installing it from the original CD, it actually didn't work on newer like Windows 8 or Windows 10 computers. But uh, anyway... That's the effort that people go to, and that's the blessing on the side of archiving these games and the software. Like, look at 1320 Challenge. That's still using Adobe Flash. The files that we're using for that game were originally created in 2007. 
and we're still able to update it because of community efforts of people making tools like JPEX's Flash Decompiler. We don't use Adobe Flash on that game nearly at all. At all. We use JPEX's, we use Photoshop, we use Fireworks, and a couple other tools for debugging. I haven't opened up Adobe Flash in months. That's the good side of this stuff, but what's the bad side of the MIG switch dumper? Oh boy, piracy, unfortunately. And it's piracy in the terms of people getting their consoles potentially banned by Nintendo from accessing online content. The negative side of this little thing is basically every Nintendo Switch game, if you remember, we're talking about old school games, you remember pirating old games in like 2010, you would have a CD generator, a CD key generator. They would crack the method the game uses to make uh, CD keys, make a key generator, and then you would generate a key to put in while you're installing the game before you crack the game. That was also before like portables were a thing or something like that. But long story short, those CD keys are still a thing to this day. So again, my Mario Kart that I have here in my hand, it has a unique identifier file on the cartridge that's that's created at the time of making the uh, the the actual cartridge. The problem with the MIG switch dumper is what it does is it dumps that file plus the rest of the cartridge to the box that has about, I think, 250 gigs of storage built into the box, if I remember right. Or it runs off of an SD card. I don't remember. I watched a video about it, and that's kind of how I learned a lot of information about it. But long story short, you dump the cartridge, you dump the uh, unique identifier file, and then you never need the cartridge ever again, especially if you're on a hacked switch. Therein lies the problem, is you never need the cartridge again. People are already talking about using this thing to buy games day one. Rip the games, rip the unique identifier file, upload them to the internet, and people can download it, pirate it, and that use that to play the game. And the problem with that is... It's a unique identifier file. If Nintendo sees a thousand people connecting to their server with the same exact unique identifier file, it's immediately going to red flag. And there's going to be potentially thousands of consoles that are banned for piracy. Or, you know, the cartridge itself is going to be banned because the person bought it, dumped it, sold it back to GameStop, or returned it to GameStop, or sold it through Facebook Marketplace. I remember... More story time. I remember I used to go to the... I lived in Cleveland. I went to the Lakewood Public Library in Lakewood, Ohio. And I would... They used to be able to rent PC games. And they would always have the CD file or the CD key in the box so you could play the game and install it. Very young age, I learned how to crack games. Very young age. Like, still using Windows 98. I was maybe 10 or 11 years old. And what I would do is I would go rent the games. I would crack them. And return the game. So my computer was loaded. It was freaking loaded. My friends loved coming over because my PC was just so loaded with games. Um, we would play the games. I would have like Tonka Monster Truck, Lionel Train Town, Roller Coaster Tycoon with all the expansions and custom roller coasters and stuff that I found through uh, like web forums that shared their coaster files. Um, and so much more. Like I believe I had the Sims one. I had Sims Tower. I had Doom. I had so many good games because I learned how to crack them at such a young age. Imagine if those unique CD keys were monitored better back in you know 2002, 2003, and they would ban if the key was used too much. That's the same thing that's going to happen here. Is somebody's going to unknowingly? I dump my Mario Kart. Let's say I dump my Mario Kart and put it on this little box, play it on my hack switch. I never need this file ever again. I can play online and everything. I sell this cartridge over Facebook Marketplace for 40 bucks to some unknowing mother buying it for her child. This is where the evil kicks in. I would never do that, but this is where the evil kicks in. I sell it over Facebook Marketplace to some mother for her child to play Mario Kart who really wanted it. Because it's cheaper than going to the exchange or GameStop or Walmart or whatever and buying it new. Now, my Switch is playing this unique copy, and her son's Switch is playing this unique copy. 
let's say her son trades the game to a friend for like Mario Party or Legend of Zelda because he got tired of playing Mario Kart. Now that friend Switch is also playing this one and has that unique identifier applied to the Nintendo Switch servers. But let's say I upload this file to Google Drive and share it on Reddit. Then thousands of people have this unique identifier file that's exactly the same as mine and the same as whoever is in possession of my Mario Kart cartridge. All those switches are going to get banned if they connect to the internet. All those switch, this game cartridge is going to be banned from connecting to Nintendo Online at all. That's the problem with this little thing is there's going to be those evil actors who buy the game, rip it, post it on Reddit, post it on piracy websites, and it's going to ruin these little boxes. It's going to ruin resale of game cartridges because you're not going to know who to trust at all. Especially with eBay when it's, you know, faceless versus if I wanted to, let's say, sell it on Marketplace, at least I can look at the person's Facebook profile. Do they have pictures of a hacked Nintendo Switch? Do they have this? Do they have that? Do they even understand Nintendo Switch hacking? Are they going to be honest with me if I ask them, hey, did you dump this game to your hacked Nintendo Switch? Did you dump it using a little red box? Did you do a backup of it before selling it to me? Nobody can be trusted at that point. So there's a big blessing and a curse to this little box existing. I love it for the archive standpoint. I hate it for the people that are the bad actors that are going to ruin it for everybody. This is kind of the reason these serial key things exist, but people are defeating them so easily that it's almost pointless. So anyway, I wanted to make a video about it. I know there's nothing for you guys to look at. I made this video very quickly. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.